Hey, well, this is Rick Hogue with uh, Creative Wood Market, and I've got a new design that I'm working on today. I'm going to be making a clock. Now, I'm taking this out of a 12 by 12 piece of Baltic birch uh, with my X Tool D1 20 watt uh, laser. I do not have the pro version, I had the standard version, which was actually a 10 watt when I bought it and I upgraded to the 20 watt. My settings are 100% power and my speed is 4. I can actually go a little bit higher than that, actually a whole lot higher than that, but I've chosen not to because I want a really good, complete clean on, clean cut on this. Um, but I'm going to call it, um, it uh, takes two pieces of this wood to make the clock uh, and it's just now started doing its thing. I'm going to let it run here for a few minutes and let you all see what it does. Should be pretty cool. Lots of smoke from this wood. Probably a little bit dry. That's why you have to be very careful about the laser because uh, when you're cutting wood you have the possibility that you could start a fire and I just saw a picture online of someone who lost their entire garage and half their house because they evidently were not out watching it and did not have a uh, fire extinguisher to be able to put the, the fire out. And there are actually specific kinds of fire extinguishers that you really should have unless you don't care whether you ruin your laser and save your house or not. Um, and I've got just a standard. I'm going to walk while this is cutting. I'm going to walk over here and this is show you. I just have a standard. I keep it right here. It's a first alert. Home One fire extinguisher. This is brand new. It's been sitting in my garage forever. But these run about $29. The one that you really want runs about $79. And it's strictly a CO2 um, fire extinguisher. So it does not put foam out. It just kills the flame. The other thing that you might want to consider doing is getting a fire blanket because you could actually put a fire blanket over the top of your system and then it would smother the fire itself. So just so you know, this is just some of the stuff that I work with. See up here the start of that tree. Going to be a tree clock is what I'm making. I saw a picture of one that somebody had made online, and so well, I think I can do that. So I drew out a tree shape to uh, use for the design, and then I drew circles inside of light burn. I did not use light burn to cut it out, but uh, inside a light burn, and this is how the graphic looks. All right, so I'll cut two and I'll put them, I'll change the angle on the second layer and it'll be 45 degrees. So you'll have trees all the way around the circle before I put the clock in there. The center point circle is a cutout for the movement for the clock. And that's 0.29 inches is what that is in size. So I hit the fit the bigger shaft if I need it. Once I've got it completely done, I'll come back up and show you what I'm doing on this particular one. And I'm gonna cut two of these, and then after I finish that, then I'll add on the uh, two pieces and show you what it looks like with the two pieces of the trees put together. I'll be back in just a few minutes. 
Alright, so here is the first layer cut out of the tree clock that I'm making. This took 28 minutes and 6 seconds to complete at 100% power and at 4 millimeters per second. Um, I only have one spot and it's probably just because this is plywood. If I had done this on natural wood, I would not have had that problem. But on the plywood, I had one spot that has glue seam in it, and I did have to cut it loose. Other than that, that's the first layer. All right, I'll show you what it looks like once I get the second layer cut. So this is the start of the second piece. There are five holes that's going to cut off right off the bat. Of course, including the center hole, which is for the shaft of the clock. And after that, it will start up at the upper right-hand side center and cut the tree and go straight around the curve of it, which is as far as I could get it to go as far as making sure that I was being as economical with my time as possible. I can already tell that the, the branches that I made for the tree are going to be really, really small, light, and very uh, breakable. So uh, this is going to be one of those clocks that gets put up on the wall, and I may even make a round 11 and a half inch uh, board to do as a backer so I can glue everything down and not have the problem of the possibility of uh, breaking some of these branches because it really looks good with, uh, with the thin branches in there. So I'll finish this up and then I'll show you the two pieces together. Oh, and by the way, now the only thing that I'm concerned with is that X Tool Creative Space is what I'm doing this in. And for this, this said that this would take four minutes, was it's estimated the amount of time that it would take to cut all this out. Of course, I knew that was incorrect. And I've already given you the time on the first cut, which was 28 minutes and six seconds. Let's see how fast this one does it. Probably about the exact same amount of time. So here is the two layers put together overlapping each other. I've just laid them up on another piece of wood because you could actually see them like this. I can't really show you the whole thing there. That's a little bit better. So you could see it like that and then your clock goes into the center of it and I'm wondering what two colors to paint this. Um, I was thinking about painting gold and brown and have the back layer be gold and the top layer be brown, but I'm open to suggestions. Why don't you leave your comments below and let me know what you think, uh, and then I will post it uh, a little bit later as soon as I get it painted. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Creative Woodmarking, this Rick Hogue.